വെൽക്കം ടു എ ടി സി എം ദ എമർജൻസി മെഡിസിൻ ചാനൽ പ്രസന്റ് ഇൻ ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് ട്വന്റി ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് മെയിൽ ഹു പ്രസന്റ് ടു ഇ ആർ വിത്ത് കംപ്ലൈൻസ് ഓഫ് ജനറലൈസ് ഇച്ചി അലോങ് വിത്ത് റാഷസ് ഓൾ ഓവർ ദ ബോഡി ആൻഡ് അലോങ് വിത്ത് പ്രസൻസ് ഓഫ് ബ്രീത്ത് ഇൻ ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ടി സിൻസ് ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻ മിനിറ്റ്സ് ആഫ്റ്റർ കൺസ്യൂമിംഗ് എ പേസ്ട്രി ഫ്രം ഔട്ട് സൈഡ് ഷോപ്പ് ഓൺ ഇനീഷ്യൽ ടെൻ സെക്കൻഡ് അസസ്മെന്റ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് വാസ് കോൺഷ്യസ് ഓറിയൻറ്റഡ് ഒബേയിങ് കമാൻഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഹി വാസ് ടോക്കിംഗ് ഇൻ ഫുൾ സെൻറ്റൻസസ് on the primary survey the airway there was uh, no swelling of uh, lips tongue or uvula there was no change in voice or any presence of strider or hoarseness of voice and there was no pooling of secretions and uh, and we had kept a crash cart ready and a definitive airway and the airway agents were kept in place and the breathing the respiratory rate was uh, 24 per minute and the saturation was 93% in room air and on auscultation there was presence of bilateral wheeze so yeah, we had uh, connected uh, to oxygen via the o2 o2 by nasal prongs in 2 liter oxygen and we had attached the monitor and after that we had uh, given injection adrenaline 0.5 mg im on the anterolateral aspect of uh, left mid thigh and uh, then we checked the bp the bp was uh, 110 by 80 mm of mercury and the pulse rate was 88 per minute and we had ins- inserted two large bore iv cannulas of 18 gauge and iv f- fluid was administered and uh, the gcs was uh, e4 v5 m6 and the patient uh, on exposure the patient was uh, afebrile and grbs was 120 mg per deciliter and we had took the uh, sample history yeah. uh, the patient uh, patient is a 20 year old male Uh, he is having an allergy to an unknown food uh, food substance he had presented with generalized itching along with rashes and breathing difficulty uh, and he had a redness of face 15 minutes after eating a pastry from outside shop uh, there is no history of any uh, dizziness or syncope or presence of sweating there is no history of any abdominal cramps vomiting or loose stools uh, there is no history of uh, change of voice or hoarseness and there is no history of any chest tightness or palpitation on the allergic history uh, there is a previous history of an allergic reaction which occurred after eating a sandwich about 3 uh, months back and there is no known drug allergies uh, the last meal was taken 15 minutes back and uh, after giving the in- injection adrenaline uh, we we observed for 5 minutes uh, still the wheeze didn't resolve so we had again given uh, one more injection adrenaline 0.5 mg im in the anterolateral aspect of uh, left mid thigh okay. and after that uh, after 5 minutes we assessed again and the we said uh, completely resolved so uh, this is a case of anaphylaxis yes, how sir. do you manage anaphylaxis first uh, of all uh, you get a patient who is having very tight chest breathing difficulty what all things you assess how do you make a diagnosis what are the differential diagnosis and how do you manage what are the differential diagnosis for acute breathlessness like this Uh, sir, in this sudden case, breathlessness. Sudden breathlessness, uh, sir, uh, could be a reason of uh, the key. here. There is a history of an uh, here intake we of know, intake. Here we know that it is anaphylaxis. I am asking other than anaphylaxis, what are the reasons for acute onset of breathlessness? Uh, so it could be a reason of any uh, pneumothorax. Pneumothorax. Okay. Or acute exacerbation. Acute exacerbation. That also takes some time. Pneumothorax, foreign body. Foreign body. foreign body especially in young child yes. okay uh, pulmonary yeah. acute pulmonary edema is another reason pulmonary, pulmonary embolism. embolism okay these are the common causes which one cardiac tamponade cardiac tamponade takes time no it takes time it uh, already some progressive breathlessness will be there after some time suddenly patient develops breathlessness this is hyper acute onset that is commonly like you told it is it can be a foreign body especially in children pneumothorax in a very tall thin individual or copd patient then you told pulmonary embolism pulmonary edema and cardiac failure. failure all these things are most common reasons yes. okay then uh, how do you assess the patient in here how do you manage the case in here? so uh, so first uh, we must look uh, the general condition the presence okay. of airway okay uh, the whether airway is patent with the patient is able to What talk what airway pa- problem patient can have in uh, new, uh, 
ఎమర్జెన్సీ రూమ్ so most one of the most common problem in emergency room whatever breathlessness you get and whatever strider you get you treat it as wheeze so which type of patients you get strider in emergency room at least carcinoma carcinoma then a carcinoma patient many of them come with a strider but we misdiagnose it as wheeze so we have to be very careful nebulization is not going to improve that situation at all okay but here it is a different issue patient can have both wheeze and strider okay bp uh, sir bp was 110 by 7 okay what are the uh, hemodynamic problems can occur due to uh, anaphylaxis sir anaphylaxis there can be the presence of hypotension hypotension yeah, and sir, shock sir, shock can occur what is the what is the reason for shock here Uh, so the presence of uh, the histamine release ah what is the reason uh, histamine release is yes, the so basic because vasodilatation vasodilatation patient develops acute vasodilatation <laughs> that produces hypotension <laughs> and shock yes okay uh, so then there can be presence of tachycardia tachycardia can be there okay. associated ah huh. and uh, the, uh, the the uh, gi symptoms can yeah. also be presented presence of abdominal cramps abdominal cramps vomiting sometimes diarrhea stools. vomiting yes. loose stools yes. everything can occur then yeah so then can patient so uh, then rashes will be present generalized rashes, rashes all over the body okay, okay. arctic and skin manifestation okay. articarial rashes yes sir lips there uh, so lips there, there can be uh, angioedema okay. okay. is there any differential diagnosis for lip uh, angioedema uh, so angioedema can be due to uh, drug c1 stress hereditary angioedema c1 stress inhibitor deficiency so that type of patients also can come repeatedly to emergency room with acute facial edema lip edema throat edema like that but they will not have skin changes yes. okay yes. so that also can come to emergency room yes uh, so then patient can have like uh, drowsy patient can be drowsy why should patient become drowsy in this patient in this condition మిస్మేనేజ్ <laughs> with the nebulizations hyperventilation syndrome so it can occur to obesity or anxious anxiousness anxious, anxious, anxious patients anxious patients breathe very fast yes. so the rate is only more uh, more there is no wheeze nothing so after <coughs> breathing fast what will happen to your uh, so after hypothetical hypothetical tetanic alkalosis and tetany okay yes. so there also you can get laryngeal edema Uh, it is not laryngeal edema laryngeal spasm okay so these patients also can present same like your anaphylaxis they come with severe breathlessness 
ఆఫ్టర్ సమ్ టైమ్ దే గెట్ కార్పోపిటల్ స్పాసం దెన్ లెరింజల్ స్పాసం బ్రీతింగ్ డిఫికల్టీ డిఫికల్టీ ఇన్ ఇంటుబేషన్ ద సేమ్ థింగ్ క్యాన్ హ్యాపెన్ దేర్ ఆల్సో ఓకే బట్ ద ట్రీట్మెంట్ ఈస్ ఎంటైర్లీ డిఫరెంట్ దేర్ అండ్ హియర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ డిఫరెంట్ ఓకే దేర్ యూ కెనాట్ గివ్ అటర్నరీ సో ఇఫ్ యూ గివ్ అటర్నరీ అదే అగైన్ ద సిచ్యువేషన్ విల్ వర్స్ so how do you manage an anaphylaxis case uh, sir an anaphylaxis case so first uh, so we must look at the airway breathing circulation mm. the airway point of view we have to check the airway speed uh, the if the airway is not patent if there is presence of any uh, glottic edema okay. then we have to uh, look for an definitive airway okay uh, as a early intubation okay. is one of the okay. thing uh, if uh, if there is presence of severe obstruction and such that intubation is not possible we should look for a cricothyroidotomy uh, emergency okay uh, so then uh, the breathing part uh, we is, is the main manifestation so okay. uh, uh, initial we give adrenaline mm. adrenaline uh, also acts as a bronco dilator okay. so bronco dilator we can be Uh, then in managing of hypotension hmm. hypotension we can give iv fluid is it a alpha stimulant or beta stimulant adrenaline adrenaline stimulates both alpha both and beta receptors so it can stimulate both alpha and beta oh. so uh, bronco dilatation can occur bp can uh, increase increase okay uh, so if there is presence of again hypotension we can give iv fluids uh, bolus okay. okay iv fluids can give 1 to 2 liters can be given in adults okay okay uh, and uh, 20 mg ml per hour you can give So it is a 10 ml per kg per hour. Kg per hour. Okay. Initial it. bolus. Yes, it is a bolus. It bolus. is not per hour. Yeah, bolus. So bolus. You give fast and you, if the yeah. patient improves with that, that's okay. What about uh, leg raising? Uh, so in case can we, put, uh, in can we use this leg raising for... Uh, uh, sorry. Trendlenburg position. Uh, uh, sir, depends on... Without any leg elevated. Yes, sir. Make it sitting position. Okay, so if the patient is having acute hypotension, you can try this for a few minutes. Yes, yes. Okay, maximum yes. five minutes you can try this. Yeah. After that, it will not help. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. If the patient is having vomiting, hmm. we must uh, prop up the patient. Oh. Vomiting? Propped up? Or uh, left lateral? Yes, sir. Left lateral position. The patient is lying down? No, left lateral position. Okay. Sir. Even in pregnant females also, left, left, left lateral position. Okay. We must position the patient. Okay. What else you give other than adrenal? Adrenal 0.5 mg uh, intramuscularly you had given. Then? Yes, sir. Uh, so, we can give steroids. What steroids? Uh, so, we can give uh, hydrocortisone. We know dex- dexamethasone. No. Anything so, is okay, but hydrocortisone is, is better because of... Fluid. fluid. So, it has got some fluid retention, retention, retention action. Retention. That's all. Okay. Then? Uh, so, we can give uh, medial... So, once you give uh, one steroid, uh, there is no need to give another steroid. steroid. Yeah. Then you can What else? Anti-histamines. Anti-histamines. Yes, sir. Which of the anti-histamines you give? H1 blocker, we can give chlorophen... Chlorophen. Or diamond. Diphenhydramine. Diphenhydramine, is it available here? No. Where? It is available. Where it is available? Cuff syrup. Cuff syrup. so normally we give avil uh, that is a cpm or chlorpenicillin malate that can be given h2 blocker h2 uh, blocker famotidine famotidine is not or oh, yeah. antidin we can so what is available yeah, you tell yes, don't sir. tell uh, pharmacology book yes, sir. <laughs> this is like reading pharmacology book yes, antidin so famotidine is available yes, tablet but yes, iv is not available so you can give antidin uh, avil uh, and hydrocodone yes, or dexamethasone then adrenaline uh, already uh, given uh, when will you give adrenaline infusion Uh, so in the case of uh, refractory refractory anaphylaxis okay. can you give adrenal as nebulization yes sir. if okay. there's presence of glottic laryngeal glottic edema so, so some doctors are hesitant to give subcutaneous so that, for them sub, this nebulization is easy access okay so nebulization has got similar effect of uh, im but not that much dose will not be absorbed okay so it will give immediate relief of your glottic edema all these things but always better is im only whatever you have told is correct yes. but if you are not confident or if you are working in a remote area yeah. where all these things are not available adrenal nebulization is better than the salbutamol nebulization okay uh, so in the case of uh, sir so refractory uh, anaphylaxis Uh, even if after giving uh, three doses two, of, uh, two doses. More, more than two doses of uh, adrenaline still if there is no uh, like uh, re- uh, still it's persisting the hmm. presence of anaphylaxis hmm. then we, it is called as refractory we start okay. with infusion okay uh, we started as a 0.5 mg per uh, ml per kg per hour 0.5 to 1 ml, 1 ml per kg per hour okay. given as infusion okay what are the side effects of adrenaline uh, so adrenaline can uh, side effects 
there is some problem which is more dangerous than all these things that you are you should be aware about that what is it if you give adrenaline one problem can occur to the heart what is that and then may like icg issues and then can occur tachyarrhythmia can occur everything can occur tachyarrhythmia 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 that type of patients immediately go to tachyarrhythmia that tachyarrhythmia induces one type of uh, uh, cardiac enlargement that is called as tachyarrhythmia uh, cardiomyopathy okay that is that can occur even when you are giving uh, im repeated dose uh, im also but that is very very rare but if you give iv adrenaline especially when you are non monitoring iv adrenaline or over usage of iv adrenaline sometimes patient can go to tachyarrhythmia and tachyarrhythmia Uh, cardiomyopathy there, there the heart will become like pot very big heart okay so that should be avoided you have to be very careful when you are giving iv adrenaline okay that should be given only when there is an expert with you or if you are confident to manage your patient like that also you can give otherwise you should avoid that im alone is enough most of the time patient will recover yes so what the advice you give to the patient now with this patient uh, uh sir uh, this patient there is a non non allergy hmm. uh so usually in case of anaphylaxis uh, the first thing is we must avoid the trigger so we here it may be egg, because you are telling it is pastry it is some hmm. burger something uh, most of the time egg egg, egg, egg oh, may be the reason we don't know yes, but wo- how can we avoid we it is very it is very difficult to avoid such situation yes, some sir. patients will repeatedly come to your emergency room yes. so what advice you uh, can give s- sir epi pen epi pen Epi pen will be the answer uh-huh. for this. Yes, They can carry, but it is not available in India. They should uh, import it and uh, use it. Yes, sir. because that is a life-saving device. Yes, Epi pen, yes, pen a friend. So each dose 0.5 ml mm-hmm. will be delivered. Yes. Sir. Okay. What else? Sir, syrup. Syrup. Investigation of choice. Uh, syrup. Tortis. For what? This uh, anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis. Okay. to find out what is the type of it uh, yes after 20 hours you have to send it class for 48 hours to prove the tenacity relaxes or muscle drift Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Uh, so then it can be the process of like biphasic reaction mm. uh, like patient if um, manifested first day then we are giving more like uh, two times uh, adrenaline injection and adrenaline im mm. again like we must uh, tell the patient like uh, to keep in observation for okay, 72 so hours again patient, again, can, patient can develop the same okay that's why we are giving hydrocortisone mm. and other things because hydrocortisone is not given for acute mm. problems mm. it is only to prevent the further episodes of the anaphylaxis yes. that's why an adrenal hydrocortisone or dexamethasone is given anything else you want to add current uh, rcuk guidelines does not mention about uh, any instruments of steroids okay does there previously but okay. they just update so that is the, that's the thing it is not useful in acute that episode at all, all. Okay. it should be only for prevention if you are, you are anticipating some sort of allergy after this episode that's why we are giving steroid Otherwise, in acute episode, only adrenaline is enough, and fluids are enough. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.